I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing the last part of my November wrap up for you. So once again, let's talk about the digital books first before I forget them. So I actually read The Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie and it was read by Dan Stevens, which was incredibly amazing. I really loved his performance, so A plus for that. But actually I discovered I'm not a, a big fan of books that are all about dialogue and discussion. So the book was interesting, but it was basically one long conversation. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it's probably not my thing. I hope that uh, some of her other books have a little more description or action or something. Um, but I don't know, maybe I should start somewhere else with Agatha Christie. Do you have any recommendations? Uh, because I've heard that she's amazing and I just wasn't really as wowed by the murder on the Orient Express. Maybe I should be reading When They Were None, which is what Sam thinks I should be reading. Probably right. Don't tell him I said that. The other book I read is Miss Cop's Midnight Confessions by Amy Stewart. Uh, this one is out from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. And I really enjoyed this book. It's not as much cohesive as the other books in the Miss Cop cop sisters series but she, this book delves more into the laws around single women at the time this is set in early 20th century uh, north jersey so uh newark maybe uh there's uh hack and sacks talked about i don't know anyway somewhere up there that's where it's that's where it's set and it talks about like these girls who go off and want to work on their own and how their mom like, because they're under 18, their mom moms would call the police on them and different things. And it just talks about the rules and the laws regarding single women. And that is really something that's been interesting to me. I read All the Single Ladies by Rebecca Tracer, and I didn't really know what that would look like in practice. But this book actually goes into some of the... Uh, deviant women is the only thing I could think of because of the podcast. I don't know. But, like, where the, these houses where they would put underage women who they thought behaved inappropriately or whatever and then I, there was some talk about them being sterilized and a lot of different things and I had no idea that any of this occurred so it's really interesting and this series just I don't know I hope it keeps going because I really love Miss Cop I mean she's based on a real person you know one of the first deputy sheriffs in America so anyway that was enjoyable I really liked it it's fun it's a nice break between um nice break between really intense books that'll also teach you something. So guys, I have tried to film this several times, so we'll try this again. Um, and that is me reviewing Lincoln the Bardo by George Saunders. Uh, the reason it's very hard is because I'm trying to <laughs> describe my feelings about this book. So I said I was disappointed when it won the booker because I really wanted a woman to win because women never seem to win things these days. So. I was disappointed and then I had a bunch of people like mansplaining to me why it was great. The thing is though, I research literary fiction that I read a lot and so I know why this book is great. I acknowledge that it's very well done, there will be papers written upon it and all of these things, but at the same time when I went to read it I did not enjoy it. And for me, I, I know a lot of people are like literary fiction, you know, literary fiction should be difficult, fiction should be difficult, blah blah blah, David Foster Wallace, blah blah blah. <laughs> but for me, I want to enjoy the books that I read, and I didn't enjoy it. I kind of thought the first part was a mess, and I felt like he said some things that the neo-spiritualism movement in literature has already said. But since he was a white dude, I feel like he got a little more recognition for it. And I'm like, well, Zadie Smith said that first, or had that theme first, or whatever, and I don't know. So for me, it just was did not work for me, but if you enjoy it, that's great. The audiobook is five stars. It's fantastically produced, so definitely go check that out. But that's just me and Lincoln the Bardo. So it's just going to be one of those like Huckleberry Finn books for me. Uh, I don't really like, but I acknowledge it's good. Sam and I still argue about Huckleberry Finn, like every month. I don't know. Not really argue, you understand. Discuss. Discuss. So the next book that uh, I would talk about is Public Library by Ali Smith. And I didn't have enough of Ali Smith after reading The Accidental with Russell over Inker Paper Blog. So I picked up this one and it's actually her short story collection uh, about public libraries. And this is more like an ode to public libraries than anything else. I enjoyed the short stories, but I don't think this is Ali Smith at her best and I wouldn't recommend starting here. Uh, there are short stories that are just like nerd fest. So if you're a book person who loves libraries and, you'll, and you love Ali Smith, and you'll definitely want to pick this book up because I feel like she just did a great job with that. So it's pretty short. Like the type is, is really big. So just, you know, 
No, and she also reads the audiobook of this one, which is fantastic. She normally isn't allowed to read her audiobooks because apparently she read, talks too fast or something. But she read this one, and so that was really cool. I think she did a great job. So, I, so publisher, if you're watching, let Allie Smith read her own books. That would be great. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> okay. So the next book I want to talk about is Cat Howard's latest novel, which is An Unkindness of Magicians, and this is out from Saga. What I really love about Cat Howard is that she writes low fantasy really well, and by low fantasy I mean magic set in our world. So high fantasy set totally different world, low fantasy set in our world with magic. There we go. Okay. So uh, this book is just really well done, and she doesn't overwhelm you with world building. So I love her stuff because it's just nice and it's slightly lighter and not as intense as far as fantasy goes and then you read it and you're just thrown into this story and it's really well done and I like her storytelling, I like her world building. The writing itself isn't like stellar but I think that as she writes and as she gains experience that will get better. I just love the stories that she comes up with. This one in particular is about uh, houses of magicians in New York and so like they're like kind of like different warring families and it talks about like where they get their magic and where it comes from and so they're kind of in this tournament and they face each other and it, it's just a lot of fun I really enjoyed it and I loved Rosen and Rot and I like this one and I believe they're all set in the same universe so it's very interesting to see as she fleshes out her universe and I feel like she's taking her time with it and yeah she just is a fantasy writer I don't think a lot of people are talking about and just her stories are just delightful. So definitely check this one out if you're overwhelmed and you just need a break. Next one is The Reluctant Queen by Sarah Beth Durst. This book is the second in the Queens of Renthea series. Now I read the first one and I thought it was okay but the structure was kind of off. She does so much better with this book and I think you can tell that this was the first book written and then that was kind of like a prequel because this book is just so much more better structured and cohesive. This book is actually about uh, the protagonist of the first book. She's now queen. Sorry, you knew that was coming, right? And so she, they need an heir for her. And so, because she has coming is coming down with illness and they don't know what's going to happen. So she needs an heir. And they actually discover a 30 uh, something year old woman who has two kids who actually is super powerful. And what I really love what Sarah Beth Durst does with her themes is in the first book, it's about a girl who doesn't have a lot of raw talent maybe as much as other people but she has a lot of hustle and drive and desire to do stuff. This book is about mom with two kids who's trying to learn to do a new thing. I think a lot of times in books you know happily ever after happens with the marriage or having a child or whatever and that married women or uh, women with children can't do fun, can't do things, can't save the world, can't do whatever, and that's just not true. And so like N.K. Jemison does with her protagonist of a woman trying to find her child, um, it's sort of what Sarah Beth Durst does, only this protagonist has her children, is having to learn how to control magic while she has her kids. So that's something I really love about Sarah Beth Durst. I feel like this book on a skill level was much uh, more well crafted than the first book, so I'm definitely interested in checking out the third book and finding out what happens. The next book I want to talk about is The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman. I really enjoyed this book. I went into it like acknowledging that this book was not going to be like a rehash of the Golden Compass's Dark Materials series and that this was basically a prequel essentially and that the other two books would be more about Lyra but this is more of a prequel and how Lyra got there and I feel like since I went in prepared that this was just a different story set um, in that universe that I did really well because if you want to like like feel nostalgia for you know the characters that you met before they're not all going to be there there's some cameos and such different people but Lyra is there but she's a baby so it's like it's not really the Lyra that we know but I really enjoyed this book this book is about a boy who you know is there in this tiny town and there's about this boy in Oxford and Lyra comes to live with this convent and it's a mysteri mysterious thing about this baby coming and um, there hasn't been a lot of plot spoilers 
for this online. So I'm not going to talk about this a lot, but I feel like he did such a good job with this and I wasn't disappointed. It's something different. It's something new and I'm glad that he went this direction. A lot of people I've seen haven't been overly excited that it wasn't as much of a bigger story, like a universe and company save the world type story, but this is a much quieter story. It's just about Lyra and keeping Lyra safe and that kind of thing. So it's very interesting and it kind of expands on the magical creatures that are in the universe and I don't know, I really enjoyed it. Again, can't really talk much about it because of spoilers, but um, I would definitely go check this out if you like the His Dark Material series. So speaking of fantasy, the last book that I read um, for this for this wrap up is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty and this is about Neri who lives in Cairo during uh, the, I think, 18th century? Uh, and so it's when uh, the French are coming down and taking over Egypt, that kind of deal. And so she is kind of a con artist and she can't actually diagnose people somehow magically. And so she does this seance to try to like banish the spirit or whatever and she actually calls down a djinn and she like realizes that there is actually another world. She does actually have cool powers or whatever, it, like normally does. However, what's cool about this is that it kind of expands on this idea of the hidden world and you have jinn obviously and the different families and political intrigue and all this extra stuff and i just thought it was so well well done and so fresh and i feel like there while there is a lot of world building it's not as intense like something like nk jemison's fifth season that's a little wider than that and there's like a map and a glossary and whatever so you will have to do a little world building work but not as much and i felt that this was just more fun while well, N.K. Jemison was super intense and like colossal while well, this is just like enjoyable. There's something about this book and the storytelling and the characters that I just loved and I I would say besides N.K. Jemison's books this would probably be my favorite fantasy book of the year just because of it's so fresh and new and it gives you a different look and you know like the human's religious uh, focus is obviously their as Islam and so even the jinn practice uh, the faith and it's just so interesting the way that she talks about culture and history and different things and so uh, I've never read a book even set in the Middle East during the 18th century so that was cool too so everything about this is just so fascinating and I really really enjoyed it so I will definitely be picking up the second one whenever it comes out like as soon as it comes out because this was just really that good and I actually listened to this on audio and the audiobook was really well done. It also helps with all of the names as well. And those end papers, oh my goodness. So yeah, that is The City of Brass. Definitely go check it out. Those are all the books. And obviously I am on a fantasy kick. I'm actually working on something about fantasy for December for Reading Women. Uh, so I will have more fantasy for you in my next wrap up. Uh, hopefully Jade City by Fonda Lee, which is what I'm currently reading. But if you have read any of these books, definitely let me know in the comments down below if you're planning on picking any of them up. Uh, what are you reading, guys? I really want to know. Uh, and yeah, so that's all from me. So I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye.